good morning, everyone, um, and you're very welcome to this week's Let's Talk Dairy webinar. Um, I'm joined this week um, by Chloe Miller from the Tipperary Calf to Beef Demo Farm. So we'll have Chloe on uh, in a few, moment, a few minutes just to explain in terms of what's happening down there um, with, the, with the project. So um, we've, we felt bad for Joseph Dumphy from the Grass 10 team last week. I think Joe... Um, uh, you had to put the waders on to get in last week, so we said we better bring you back when the sun is shining. Tell us, yeah, I, I'm getting, I'm getting, a, yeah, I'm getting a better, a better deal now this week. Have, so, have, <laughs> have, have, we, have we ever seen a week where it has, um, it has, it has changed so dramatically? Um, so maybe explain to us how is things looking out there, um, this week? Yeah, as you said, like your last Thursday, James, were in, <laughs> nearly were all depressed on the on the call with the with the way weather conditions were. You know those thunderous downpours, but like as you said, amazing the amazing the difference a week can can make on farms. And you know I know we had an awful lot of rain, but like growth was still tipping away in the background on a lot of farms. And you know over the last kind of even five you know five days six days we've seen a an absolute you know you know pile of surplus appearing on farms. Grass growth has really taken off and and has caught farmers. You know has caught farmers on on the hop if we look at some of the the data there james just from past base this week growth rates on average are up to 73 kilos um you know demand is somewhere sitting around 60 there at the minute so there's you know there's you know 13 14 15 kilos of, of a difference there between growth and demand at the minute which just very simply every week puts roughly you know 100 kilos uh on your average farm cover so um you know cover per livestock unit there up to 199 um, and just from, from, a, from an intake point of view, what we're seeing is somewhere in around three and a half kilos a meal going in at the minute and diet of around so 15 kilos, 15, 16 kilos of grass there. So look, that's roughly where where, where, where things are at the minute on, on farm. Again, I was out, you know, this week, a couple of groups and, you know, people who have been were measuring measuring there last week, last Wednesday or Thursday. And, you know, farm has absolutely taken off in between. So it's a few key bits there just to cover on that. Um, in terms of surplus, then, what should people be doing or looking at, Joe? Yeah, so I think, look, at the key thing, the key, the key points this week, James, is to get out, walk the farm. You know, every five days from now on, if you're out on Monday, get out again now Friday this week and keep walking the farm. And we would say now, get ready. We're on the, we're on the 18th of, of the month now for June. From now on, from now, June, we should be doing six walks for June. So every five days for June, six walks for the month of June. Um, and yeah, the surplus, there's probably... There's probably 15% of, of milking platforms, you know, out, out need that need to go out or, or, or you know, that, that have been either been taken the last few days, but on farms as well, that they need to go out 15, 20% just with the way that, that, that surplus is appearing on farms. So, you know, get out, get walk on the farm. And, and I suppose probably what happened in other years is maybe people make a decision. Maybe it might be a bit of silage going on next week. Maybe I might leave some paddocks into next week or maybe leave them for a week to bulk up. People have been taught in the past that that's a that is that is a mistake because if it's you know over ten percent of the farm and you're that little bit higher stocked at the minute with ground costs for silage, you're just pulling back. You know you're slowing down the regrowth and you could put the farm in on the under more pressure. Um, you know in the in the future, so get those paddocks, get them taken, and get them back grown again, and get you know and, and get them moving again. Um, just other few other few key points there on that, like the cover per livestock unit. It's at two hundred. Bring that back to one sixty. So you know, use the pasture base and use the predicted the predicted planner on pasture base to get that to get that done. Um, and the predicted growth rates are looking good. They're kind of staying steady around the seventies. You know, 70, 70, 75 for the next week. So be brave when it comes to it. And I suppose James, just on the last point there is that you know there's. You know, a lot of movement, as you've probably seen around the country, or so James and you, Chloe, probably as well, just seen a lot of movement with silage harvesters. You know, it's important to get out, to get out this week and walk, mm. walk those silage fields. You know, everyone needs high quality grass or high quality silage for some proportion of the stock that's on their farm. Get out and get it. And if you're unsure, you know, get the nitrates and the sugars tested there from your local Chagas Goffs or something like that and get in contact with someone, a rep, and get it tested if you're unsure at all. Thanks, Joe. <clears throat> I think that's it, really. It's it's all of a sudden it's turned to surplus and they need to be taken quickly. Um, and as you say, assess silage crops. I only wrote a piece this week in terms of we need to probably look at the silage harvests annually 
and this idea of maybe letting crops bulk for another 10 days or a fortnight, um, it could actually have a negative effect on mm -hmm. the annual yield of, of total silage harvested on the farm. Yeah, and so, just one uh, of the, la the last point, James, here, just as well to cover is that, you know, we're, we're, getting, we're getting surplus on farms, but we're also coming towards heading you know, heading dates like over the next week. And we're just beginning to see that little bit of stem appear. And so it's important to be brave now when taken out, when take when taken out ground and take it out quick. Yeah, lovely. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Jim. So, yeah, we heard from Joe from the Grass 10 team there in terms of very good messages. Um, Chloe, you're dialing in from um, the south involved in the Tipperary Calf to Beef Demo Farm. Can you explain um, a little bit about the project just for our viewers and listeners in terms of um, yeah. what's the objectives? So, yeah, so look, Chagas, um, we signed a lease on a farm in Tipperary just um, between Fetter and Cashel there um, on April, it was actually the 1st of April 2022, we signed the lease. Um, Chagas had the lease on a farm for 15 years and we formed a share farm agreement with um a meat processor and a dairy processor. So our meat processor is Don Meats, based below in Grena. And uh, our dairy processor is um, the subsid subsidiary of them, um, Chinook Farm there in Bandon. So essentially Carberry Co-op. Um, so yeah, look, we've, we farmed uh, a Ballyvaden Beef Farm Limited, which is what the farm is going to trade under. It's a 105 hectare grassland farm, um, as I say, we um, signed the lease in 22 and um, when we started, look, the ground was in stubbles. It was in, there was horses on the farm. So very little grassland, very poor quality grass, That what grass was there. So mm. we were, I suppose, lucky in a way that we had no crops to, to deal with or anything like that. So stubble ground went straight back into grass. Um, so of our 200 or of our 259 acres on the farm, 93 of this is in grassland now today. And we have 30 acres in barley. So um, so it, it's all been receded over the last 12 months, Chloe, in terms yeah, of the back so we have the about, production. Yeah, we have about 150 acres receded. Um, so it's we're in an excellent position. Our, I suppose our biggest challenge now is to actually keep the grass down. Mm. Uh, we won't say it's a problem, but it is a, definitely a challenge, especially yeah. when we have young stock. I suppose it's da different on a dairy point of view. Um, you've you've bulk in numbers and you've big animals with your cows grazing high covers, so yes. we don't have that grazing power as such. But um, I'm, I'm going to come back to you on that point, um, Chloe, in terms of that grass and grass management, because that's always a challenge on these farms with young stock. Tell us a little bit then, right, in terms of the overall project. You've explained that a little bit about what type of system are you running? What type of you know stock do you intend on buying? Um, yeah. age of slaughter breeds for the yeah so we, it's a dairy calf to beef system so we're buying in 300 calves was the aim to buy in so we'd run 300 um, zero to one year olds and 300 one to two year olds to stock to farm so when we started in 22 um, there was little to no facilities on the farm so we brought in 56 calves we reared them on milk at two weeks of age and we fed them with a tea feeder down in a, an open hay barn, which uh, I suppose in calf to beef systems is, is what's out there. And it worked very well. We were, it went very well for us. But to stock the farm then, we brought in weaned animals and we built this up to 240 animals. So they would have been 2022 20, born animals. And I suppose what they were going to graze was very little. So we had to bring in bigger animals too. So we stocked the farm with 230, 20, 21 born animals. Um, so the plan is that we'd bring in, this would be the numbers going forward, we'd roughly have around 600 animals going forward, um, steers and heifers. Um, I suppose we have a big focus put on genetics and what we actually want um, on the farm going forward. I suppose a lot of dairymen, and I know a lot of dairymen listening to this, but a lot of dairymen put an awful lot of focus on picking their dairy sires, but mm. I suppose not all, but a good share do leave it up to the AI man or whoever comes into the yard then to pick the beef sires. And I suppose wondering then why they're not getting good value for their calf in the mart later on in the year. So mm. we did put a big emphasis on that. I suppose we're lucky that we are in a position as well that we have full control over our dairy calf coming in. So we have four, four source dairy farms. So obviously one of these is Chinook in, in the Chinook farm in Bandon, obviously being one of our shareholders. And we've three other commercial dairy farmers um, they all just happen to be based in Cork. 
So the lads have been very good to us in terms of we have a geneticist here, Alan Toomey, who picks the bulls for us. So Alan actually looks at each herd profile individually and selects certain bulls for certain cows that the lads and the lads do use them and, and it's worked very well for us. So I suppose in terms of that, like we set out a lot of criteria then as well for the lads to follow. So obviously they have to use the bulls that we select. They also have to make all cows available for us so they can't go off and pick the strongest lads and sell them in the mart and we have the rest to pick. Everything has to be available for us to buy. Um, we put a minimum weight on it, which I suppose, look, it's a lot of what you're seeing trends in the marts. Like if you've cows under certain weights, a lot of lads are seeing there's no bids. So to reflect that, we put a weight value on ours. We had it at 35. We dropped it back to 30 just because one of the herds is a crossbred herd and it is hard for them to achieve that, especially at two weeks of age. The cows have to have no signs of ill health and the farmers have to allow us to look at the cows before we buy them. So we send someone down every week to look at the calves. Now we've had no problems. We've had no scour. We've been very lucky. And the lads also have to give a PI three inch nasal before they come to us. And they have to get that five days before they come to us. Now you'd say, does it work? Doesn't it work? 100% from what we can see this year, it has worked. We've had no cases of pneumonia. We've had no ill signs of health. And the calves now that are out of grass, thriving, they're flying it, they're doing really well. So it so does help, yeah. So really, as you said, the big focus there has been on, okay, the correct genetics, but also in terms of that whole health piece, making yeah. sure calves are healthy, vaccination yeah. protocols, that's massive. And talking to a lot it of is massive, yeah. calf it is to massive. beef farms, that, that's a big one in terms of um, if we can prevent ill health in, in, in young cows moving farm to farm. And like, it's very simple to get that right in terms of like, a lad will look after his dairy heifer. He'll give her all the colostrum in the world. If you give that same treatment to your beef animal, it's going to pay you in the long run. Like, if, especially mm. bull or heifer. Like, we were testing calves as well for uptake of colostrum within 10 days of age. And even having that, not as a threat there, but having it there as an incentive for the lads, they wanted to have the best calves and they knew we were going to test it. And it did show and it did work. So I suppose having this in place, like I know a lot of dairy beef lads have dairy farmers that they buy off every year so a lot of lads will have a fella that will take their bull calves and he'll go off and rear them and finish them but I suppose to be fair to him and to keep that partnership up you have to do the calf right as well mm. um, and Talk to me about the genetics then was there any issue in terms of uh, farmers a little bit wary of um, Chloe and Alan sitting down to pick the bulls and uh yeah, was it there is. was there certain criteria that you still selected? Obviously, in terms of yeah. calving, these gestation lengths very important. How did you select those bulls? And is that I, just something the farmers were very open to, or a little bit skeptical of Chloe? I suppose. Look, I suppose the selection of the bulls was definitely Alan's area of things, and it definitely wasn't taken uh, with a pinch of salt either. Lads were challenging him on it, which is fair enough. Like they're the ones who have to have to calve him. But I suppose the first emphasis we put on is we lost the dairy farmer because everyone is different as to what their threshold for calving is, calving difficulty, mm. and you have to work off that then. So now we've had no like we'd be onto the lads constantly and they, they would let us know fairly fast if they were having ca hard calvings, but we haven't, we haven't had anything. So I suppose Alan does put a big emphasis on the calving ease. So what he has done is he's created a kind of a program for the lads to follow. So he's used, he's, four, he's picked four, what he calls bull teams that the lads can be able to select from. Now it's different for every farmer, obviously, because you have to look at the cows and what type of cow you have. But we said these four bull teams, the first one would be easy calving. So these are your probably what you're going to use first to build up your numbers to get money going again in, in the dairy system. The second one then is bulls that we can use later in the breeding season. So these have a shorter gestation. Um, then you have your earlier ones. So slightly longer gestation that you can use earlier in your breeding season. These probably be your limousines, and your charlottes. And then your high beef mare with sires at the end of the season. So like these are all criteria he has used. And we have it also in place that the lads have to use at least three breeds across the board. So and like this can't be your Angus or your Hereford. So they have to use three. So this is what we wanted. We wanted to find, I suppose, the alternative breed, if that's what you want to call it. Like lads okay. are very used to using your Anguses, but there's also Arbrex and Limousines there to select from that aren't going to impact your gestations or anything like that. So it's really that they're using a range of breeds, not only, I suppose, what would have been your your um, traditional beef breeds used on yeah. the area. So the primarily breeds that we have on the farm today are Angus, 
uh, Aubrex, Salers, Limousines, your Partenays, and um, we have uh, Sailors in there as well. So Very a good. big mix, like, so. And uh, tell us then, in terms of the type of system, right, you're running steers on heifers. What's the plan in terms of um, age of slaughter type of system you're running in terms of finishing yeah. targets, weights, that sort of so, stuff? So. I suppose I mentioned there that we had 2021 born animals that would have been slaughtered um, mm. and Christmas gone past. We actually had an outbreak of TB, so we had to cull fairly heavily on that. So we lost a lot of data in that. So it's not really anything that we can go off. The system that we had, a lot of these animals were fit and they were killing in spec for us at 18 to 24 months. That's the aim for us. Um, definitely gone before 24 months. They just they have to be to suit the system um everything we we'll aim to get as many heifers just they're going to finish earlier off of grass um, and get as many gone as we can before they hit the shade realistically you're going to probably have all your heifers gone and you're going to be left with a few steers there probably over the winter aim to have our steers killing at a carcass about 310 to 320 that kind of way and uh, our heifers are going to be a bit lighter at 270 280 um so that's kind of the system we're running but i suppose we do put a big emphasis on the CBV index, which is, um, I suppose, a relatively new thing launched within ICBF there. So it's your commercial beef value that's put on the animal's beef traits. So I suppose in essence, it's basically what we, we put this in as well for the, this was a ma major focus as well when we were picking sires. So we paid the dairyman based on the calf CBV. Mm -hmm. So we took an average of calves that went through the marts in doubles or triples, so in groups. So obviously we were buying in batches as well. So we went on that and we took the average of bulls that went through for certain ages and heifers that went through and we created a base. So we gave a base price of 163 euro for bulls and 127 euro for the heifer. So the base price for CBV is 80 euro. So if you can produce an animal that's 100 euro CBV value, where it'll give you 20 euro extra. So euro for euro above your um your 80 euro base. Yep. So our average CBV is 115 for the this year's calves that we brought in purely from the genetics that Alan selected to get us to that level. National average is 65 euro. Yeah. So in essence... So it's, it's really those genetics that you're selecting that's driving that. And, and yeah. you just have an incentive in there in terms of the higher beef merit calves, ultimately you're paying a premium for them. Yeah, um, at birth. and like um, lads can lads can pick these just as easy as they'll pick their dairy sires. Like if you're looking at your EBI index, just switch your DBI index, and you'll find these bulls, and you'll be able to create these high CBV calves as well for themselves going forward. Yeah, and we we would have had a conversation a few weeks ago on that ultimately in terms of being mindful that about the beef sub index, um, and the calving sub index, um, and I suppose using bulls that are that are balanced, but then also in terms of, as you said, there's teams of bulls for the more mature cows that are slightly heavier weighted towards the beef sub-index. Yep. Um, a question in there in terms of, and it's probably one at the moment, tra transitioning calves, any issues transitioning calves from that kind of weaning period or what's the protocols first in terms of when calves come in, the amount of powder, when do you switch to once a day? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have a fairly strict protocol that we would have fol followed from what Nikki is Nikki Byrne is doing above in Grange. Um, so there's an awful lot of research gone into this, and we've followed what Nikki has done. So basically, calves come into us, and they have to be two weeks of age. They came into us, I think, this year an average of 18 days, so it kind of suited us. Um, they come into us after trans like it could take three, four hours for calves to come up from parts of West Cork to us. So you know, the slight stress on them within reason so when they come into us whatever time they come in we pick the day in the week as well just to make it easier for the lads on the farm so calves are coming into us every tuesday when they come in they receive two liters of electrolytes straight away and they're put into a pen straw water the whole lot at feeding time then so they usually come into us around dinner hour and the lads will start feeding calves then a half a three so that group of calves that came in on that day will receive one liter of milk powder as well now some lads might question it. We had it at the three litres or the two and a half litres there as well for that first feed. We found it was kind of sickening calves. They hadn't settled fully in within the time. causing It wasn't causing problems, but calves just weren't happy. So we pulled it back to a litre and then the calves, by the next morning, they had settled and they were up and they were looking for milk and they were willing to drink. So 
that was just something we changed early on. Uh, a lot of our calves as well are coming off whole milk. So I suppose some lads kind of, they might make the mistake when they buy in calves to maybe dilute it down a small bit and try and, try and I suppose, the concentration of it, thinking they're doing the right thing for the calf. If you reduce the concentration, you're actually making it harder for that calf to clot it so they're more likely to scour. So I think that's a small thing that it's a key point that lads need to, to remember as well. But yeah. we've had no, we were lucky enough now when the calves are coming on, we had no major outbreaks of scours or anything like that. Calves are coming to us healthy as well, which is the key thing. Um, They stay on. So we take their, we go for their overall lifetime age. We don't get it from the day we start. We take it from their birth date and we go by the youngest animal in the batch. And then we treat them as a batch. So from that youngest animal, we calculate on 25 days. So from birth so zero day zero to day 25 they'll be on three liters of milk morning and evening and that's made up of um 0.125 of a gram or 0.125 grams um per liter is the mix we go with so about 12 and a half percent concentration i think is roughly what we're going with um and they'll stay on that as i say until day 25 of life then we'll transition them from day 25 to day 30 so usually starting a monday and by friday they'll be transitioned to once a day so we'll go four liters of milk same concentration um and four liters of milk and they'll stay on that then roughly day 30 to day 64 which will be weaning and we'll just count back five days then again monday to friday kind of job and they'll be weaned off usually have um just kind of leave them settle in the shed then for a day or two we've had no it's gone very smooth for us and um, we've been very lucky in the fact that it has gone very smooth we've had no problems calves are turned out the grass we're lucky with one shed we have the option of leaving calves in and out um, which worked well for a younger batch because they had all the bad rain there the last the last two weeks. So definitely suited them. So we have three batches then that we wean. So we have three sheds, so three batches. Um, first shed is out to grass now, which probably a month or so. They'd have been your late January, early February calves. They're flying it. They're doing really well. Starting to get really into the grazing now. Still on a kilo of nuts. And they probably will be on a kilo of nuts probably until another week or so, I'd say. Um, but in terms of transitioning, going out to grass, it's gone very smooth for us. We don't do anything special. We just have a straw out in the fields for them to pick at, and they do pick at it. Um, and they just have the bit of roughage there and the nuts as well, just to keep them a bit settled. But in terms of it, I know lads can run into big problems, but we have been very lucky. So, And really, how much concentrate then at that point, weaning point, day? 64 to 65 what sort of level of concentrate are those calves eating at that at they'd that be eating yeah so we do have a bit of criteria as well actually should have said that when we do wean them they have to be so we we weigh everything before we wean and they have to be a minimum of 80 kilo i think our average is actually 79 and a rough uh weaning date i think is 72 that's just off the top of my head now it's in and around that they have to be eating at least a kilo a meal before the weaning process um and as I said, the big thing is really gradually weaning them off. I think that's something later in the year, lads, forget about. They're kind mm. of more focused on the weaning process earlier in the year and doing it gradually. I suppose you get fed, fed up with feeding milk as well later in the year and you'll just cut it off. And I suppose you might, might, might pay for that later in the summer then. Yep, I get gotcha. you. And really then, as you're saying, you, you haven't had issues in terms of summer grass or, or the likes. It's that transition then, keeping some concentrate in the diet, straw yeah. as an option for cows at, at, and then gradually taking that concentrate out of the system then over yeah. time yeah exactly okay. yeah okay very good um i suppose the the la the last question i i possibly have for you there is obviously it's a demonstration farm we've talked about the farm how you're selecting calves there's obviously going to be a lot of data coming through in terms of not only genetics and the impact that that has, but the overall performance and the system you're actually running. Um, economics is going to be part of that as well, Chloe, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So how are you going to, how are you going to get this information? What's the plan? Um, will have people listening to this? Is it open days? Is it discussion groups visiting? What, how, how are we actually going to sp spread the knowledge as such? Yeah, so I suppose when we started, we had a lot of, I suppose, in-house. We had a lot of Chagas lads and obviously our shareholders and people looking on, wondering how things are going. So we have had a lot of people up. I suppose when we brought in CAS, we stopped discussion groups coming in just to be fair to everyone and biosecurity and the whole lot. We stopped it for calves. 
um, just while we had cows on milk, bringing in people. But I, I'd hope in the month of June that we start bringing in discussion groups and, and lads will be able to come up to us and have a look at the farm and see what we're doing. We've come an awful long way. We're only here a year, a year and two months now, really, at the moment. Like, And if you saw it day one to where it is now, you wouldn't believe the change that we have done. But definitely trying to get the information out. We welcome as many groups as possible. If lads want to come, they can get in contact with myself and we can organise something. We're probably a bit off an open day, yeah, but maybe next year we might we might look at doing something or have a kind of a something that we can bring in farmers to have a look at what we're doing. But yeah, definitely just I suppose gathering the data is the big thing at the moment and trying to get a base of where we're at and see mm -hmm. can we build on that. So there's a lot of work to be done yet in that side of things. But definitely we, we want lads to come in, we want lads to look at this and we want people to go home and take points home from what we're doing that they can bring home and do as well. So, and is a lot of this going to be channeled through the Dairy B Five Hundred program? How is that? Like, I'm sure yeah, there's going to be tech yeah. notes and updates. No, we will. So we will be. We're the demonstration farm for the Dairy B Five Hundred program. So we've had the Dairy B Five Hundred farmers down because obviously we're working the closest with them. They were down very early. They'll probably be the first group back into us now when we open the gates. Probably around the first of June. They'll be the first group back down, and we'll be in contact with them constantly. We work closely with the team there in the Dairy B 500. Um, but yeah, definitely, we'll be probably putting a lot of our results out through the Dairy B system, through the Dairy B 500 system as well. Um, and I suppose we probably will later on launch maybe our own channels there on, on social media that people can keep up to date with us as well. Very good. Um, look, what I think we've given listeners a good insight as to all the work that's going on um, on the farm um plenty of practical tips there throughout too chloe in terms of how these are actually managing calves and and that's the big one in terms of reducing any health issues making sure performance is 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 on point as such um that reduces the workload um significantly in terms of in these systems as well Chloe, if if, if there isn't health issues on the farm yeah Come here thanks very much um if anyone has any further um request with regards to information you can contact myself or contact chloe um, and we'll get in touch um next week we have liam mccabe liam's from board bia and liam's going to um, discuss dairy markets and where they're at heading into the second half of 2023 so as always folks um it's a busy period on farms so do farm safely and we'll see you next week <laughs>